Gary Russell from Capitol Heights. Mike Sile from the Philippines. Mike Sile, seven years younger. He is the taller fighter, and he's certainly got the reach on Gary Russell Jr. He is also undefeated. As we take a look at the rules with our championship out, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight. Fighter can be saved by the bell in any round. The fight is official after four rounds. So there you have it, main event set. Mark Maxayo looking to improve to 24 and 0. Gary Russell Jr. looking to make the sixth successful world title defense of his WBC featherweight title. Stylistically, there's a lot of intrigue with this one. Russell, as we said, quick, high IQ against Maxile, the puncher. Here is Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Borgata Hotel, Casino and Spa here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by TGB Promotions and Showtime, sponsored by GEICO. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, the president, Mauricio Suleiman. The supervisor is Jill Diamond, along with the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. The commissioner is Larry Hazard. Introducing our three judges scoring this bout, from Pennsylvania, Lynn Carter. From New Jersey, Mark Consentino. And also from New Jersey, Henry Grant. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Benji Estevez. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from the Borgata Hotel, Casino and Spa in Atlantic City, New Jersey, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing dark blue trunks with gold trim, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, by way of Tagbilaran Bohol in the Philippines. He weighed in at 125 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 23 wins, no losses, 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his first attempt at a world title, ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, the current undefeated WBC number two featherweight world contender, introducing Mark Magnifico Magsayo. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner. Entering the ring wearing black trunks, fighting out of and representing Capitol Heights in Maryland. He weighed in at 125 and one half pounds. His record stands at 31 wins, one loss, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his sixth defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, here is the longtime, current, reigning and defending WBC featherweight champion of the world, introducing Mr. Gary Russell Jr. And once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Benji Estevez. Okay, guys, we receive your pre battle instructions. Keep it clean. Obey my commands at all times. And most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Trunks are good. Touch them up. Main event is here. Max Sile versus Russell. And here we go. Let's go, 
Moxayo last fought against Julio Ceja in August of 2021. Won by TKO. Trained by Freddie Roach. And you see Moxayo, that right hand can be a game changer. Gary Russell certainly aware of that. Russell, on the other hand, making a six world title defense. He has held the belt for 2,493 days. He won it back in 2015. And here he is at 33 years old, fighting another rising contender. Russell, the longest reigning champion in boxing. Not as active as what many people would like. And he said that I can't force guys to fight me. There's fights I want, I've been asking for, and I just haven't been able to get them. He's one of the guys like Leo Santa Cruz, Gervonta Tank Davis, Lomachenko. And he said, even if he's like, if I go up and wait, it's going to be for a belt. I'm not going to fight a contender to fight for the belt. He said, I am a champion and I deserve to fight another champion. And there's a nice uppercut from Maxayo. This is certainly going to be a chess match, and there you see the jab from Russell. He is quick. And even though he's in the gym, it is much different once you're in that ring. And there is that right hand again from Maxayo. Russell certainly has to be aware as he continues to use that quick jab. Now Russell, back to the jab. As round one comes to an end. Oh, Gary, watch that on. Spit bucket right here. Give me the spit bucket. Have a spit bucket. Uppercut. Didn't land flush or clean, but still, one thing that Russell has to be aware of. Round two. It's two of 12, Russell in the black trunks, Moxayo in the navy blue and gold. Moxayo is looking for that uppercut, and Russell back into the body. And if you remember that Julio Seja fight against Moxayo, Moxayo was down. Seja was doing a really good job at bringing the fight to Moxayo. And there's that uppercut again. Maxile's really focusing on that punch. He must see something with Russell and the way he comes in. And Russell's got to be cautious when he does engage with Maxile. There's that left hand as both guys get tied up a bit. Now Mixayo again, likes to dart in. Russell ducks underneath. 
And there's a short left again. And it's one thing about Russell, he is just so smooth. It is so hard. And there's a body shot followed with a left hook from Russell. But Moxile still right there. Now into the body is Russell. And now McSyle pushes Russell back a bit. Russell is on high alert. That's something you have to do with a guy like McSyle. Because now there's an overhand right. It is so difficult to get Russell out of his game. He generally dictates each of his fights. Siles looking to change that. There's that right hand again. Back to the body is Russell. And there's that left hand from McSyle as he Backs away. Russell trying to time up McSyle and McSyle trying to do the same. And I think he may have connected on that overhand right. Not positive. Might have been partially blocked, but that is the end of the round. I got hit by him. Okay. 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 Round three. And you heard Gary Russell saying he got head butted in his corner. There is a body shot from Maxile as Russell's in his southpaw stance. Maxile switching shots up, going back into the body. He is certainly going to have to fight the fight of his life here tonight. And there's Russell again, huge left. Was able to knock McSyle off balance a bit. May have been tripped up. But nonetheless, you're starting to see the aggressiveness of Gary Russell. And his left hook connected for McSyle. Fans here at the event center of the Bogota Hotel, Casino, and Spa are certainly into this one. Looking on closely. And I'm sure the nation of the Philippines are also looking closely. One of their own with an opportunity to become a world champion. Back into the body by Russell. Style, providing some different angles. It's so hard to blitz Russell because his footwork is so clean. And you see, just ducking out of the way of Maxile. I fully expect Maxile to win the punches thrown. Mark in this fight. And now Russell into the body of Maxile. You see slowly stepping towards Magnifico. And now Russell tied up with Maxile. 
And there's a jab again from Russell. And Russell's such a student of the game. I mean, he is always anticipating, always adjusting within rounds. And there you see a short jab just grazed the forehead of Russell, and then he looked to counter. And then a straight left again. Russell, absolutely stunning. We got to reset his feet. When he's offset on the feet, put your offense up. Use the body movement, bro. Fuck him up. We're going to fuck him around, bro. You don't got no sway. There you see the father of Gary Russell looking on at his son. He has always been a huge component of all of his son's training camps and their fights. Last couple of months certainly have not been easy for the family. But as Gary Russell said, they are always fighting through it. Now, round four of this championship bout. Sile again just darting in on Russell. Huge uppercut just missed. And he sticks him with the jab. Both guys have to watch their head butts. And there is a, a seam of body shots. And Russell may be hurt. Something. Russell clearly let out a grimace. And it looks like he's hanging his right arm. Russell trying to fight through it. And there's a straight left again from Russell. And now he connected on Moxayo as he tries to get on the inside. And there's that overhand left. So Russell was able to withstand that little slip that he suffered. Certainly we will take a look at what happened there. And there's that old, just beautiful left hook from Russell. But Moxile's confidence has got to be growing here. To see the grimace on Russell, he generally does not show emotion through a fight. So to see that on his face alone is probably a win for Moxile. There's that left hand again connected as Russell used the momentum of, of Moxile coming forward to throw him along the ropes. And there's the left again. Curious to see if Russell hurt himself. He did, uh, once again, he did say he had an undisclosed injury and there's that left hand just caught Moxile as he darted in. And now Russell using that left again, being extremely aggressive. Not used to seeing Russell be that aggressive. And I wonder if it does have anything to do with that fact that he may be hurt. So he could be on a timeline to finish this fight. And there's that short left again from Russell. And there's the end of that fourth round.
Deep breath. Get your nose up your mouth and cover. Breathe. Uh, huh? You need a little bit of busy, okay? Uh -huh. Breathe. Just you get a jab and then I wouldn't jab, okay? Jab, step back, you can go up to your back, you might get your right hand, okay? Masakit na rin yung kanan niya, lagi nakababa. Kaya yung jab mo dapat marami. Okay? So here's that the highlight. There is that right hand. There you see. I think it was it was it was the right hand. Kind of bends awkwardly a little bit. You almost saw it bend through the glove, and that was the the issue that Russell had. And there you saw the doctor in the corner kind of checking on the hand of Russell. And he said he was good, said he can punch. So how badly is it hurting him? Who knows, but he feels well enough to continue on here in round five. That is something to watch for to see how much Russell will throw that right hand now. There's that straight left again from Russell. And again, Russell using that left. I'll be curious to see. Russell has not thrown that right hand yet through the first minute of this fifth round. And he does like to throw the jab a bit. And being a southpaw, that right hand is your lead jab. Mark Sial has got to use this as an opportunity to get on the inside and really press the action on Russell. Now, Oxile, once again, coming forward, overhand right, followed by the left cross. And Russell, as you see through this fight, I'm just noticing he is not throwing that right hand at all. And there's a body shot from Russell. And I don't know how he is going to be able to continue through this fight solely on just throwing his left. And uh, if Maxayo hasn't picked up it, on it in this round, I'm sure he will in the next because it is certainly noticeable. And there's some body shots from Maxayo. And now Maxal really amping up the pressure and he was on top of Russell. Russell went down a bit as referee lets Russell get back to his feet. Closing seconds of round five. Here's some of the highlights of that round. And there was when Moxile sort of jumped on Russell. Round six. And Russell seems to plan to just use his left hand here 
the rest of the way. Maxao comes in with a couple of combinations there, and that's what Freddie Roche was letting him know in the corner. He wants him to throw those three-punch combinations, wants him to come forward a little bit more. And there he goes, gets through the defense of Russell. Still looking for that uppercut. And Russell is going to have to focus on movement and angles, especially since he is relying just on his left hand now. And there's that straight left by Russell. Maxayo with the big uppercut. Russell presses forward again. And he is on Russell. Maxile stalking Russell. And Russell, again, still has some quickness, and there's a body shot connected from McSyle. This will be extremely impressive if Russell can escape with the victory here tonight. The fact that he is only using one hand, and there he knocks McSyle off balance with that left hook. Style. Again, continuing to chase Russell around the ring. And there's a left hook, and Russell again just ducks underneath. He is certainly trying to use all his tools that he can available to him as round six ends. Here's the three punch combo that Maxile was able to connect with, get through the defense of Russell. And then Russell ducking underneath, but he took an uppercut that was partially blocked, but Maxile was able to connect a bit. Russell here in the second half of this fight. Maxayo, in my opinion, has got to really step it up now. You know you have Russell hurt. He should have been able to pick up on the fact that Russell is not using his right hand. So this should give an opening to Maxayo to make it as difficult as possible for Russell. And there's Maxayo again. Lunging forward. Trying to cut off the ring of Russell. And Russell connected on that straight left. And there's a left hand again on the chin. And Russell was able to counter beautifully on Maxile. Maxile has landed 89 punches thus far. Russell only 40. It's so only going to be interesting on the judges' scorecards how they view this fight. Russell is the champion. But Maxile 
has been the more active fighter. But Russell trying to rely on his defense, his movement, and placing of his left hand throughout. Russell. I mean, we knew Russell wasn't going to throw that much coming into this fight. And there's that left hand again connected for Russell. That's the way Russell fights. He, he relies on that quickness and defense and, you know, picks his shots. He, he relies more on being accurate. That's his big forte, but right now with one hand down, I don't really know what else Russell can do. And you can sense he is trying to be more aggressive with the left hand when Mike Sile gets in close, but it's difficult. And there's Maxile again as he takes the left hand, but he was able to deliver one of his own. Final seconds of round seven. Interested to see how the scorecards are thus far. McSyle with a body shot to Russell. But as we said last round, I mean, McSyle been the more active fighter, more aggressive. Russell, the more accurate fighter. As he connected on the chin of McSyle. And then back into the body. Style. Chasing Russell around the ring, and there's that overhand right by McSile, but countered with the left hook of Russell. And there is that stiff jab from McSile, knocking Russell back a bit. As we know, McSile, a ball of energy. Russell in his last fight against Nyambayar two years ago, he started to slow down in the second half of that fight. It was noticeable. So you wonder where the cardio is going to be for this one. Russell always generally in good shape, but a two year layoff. As the rounds move on, it couldn't slow the legs down a bit. And there's that overhand right again from McSyle. Russell stiffs him with a couple of left, straight lefts. Now Russell ducks out of the way of Maxayo. And now Russell once again
Russell backing Maxayo up a bit, and now Russell just missed on that left hand. Again, Freddie Roach wants Maxayo to continue to be active and, and throw those combinations, keeping Russell off balance. You want to put that pressure on him. And now Russell smiling a bit as round eight comes to a close. There is that body shot from Russell, but he took a right hand from Maxayo, knocking Russell off balance. And there is that sh double straight left from Russell. And Russell a little late to get off of his stool. And now we resume action here of round nine. I think this is still anyone's fight. I mean, Russell's been fighting with one hand essentially since the, I believe it was the second or third round on. And there's a, a Maxia walked right into a left and Russell just danced out of that. Just exquisite boxing. And now Russell back into the body. Maxayo tried the looping left hook and to no avail. And now Maxayo is trying to catch Russell. Russell's just been able to sidestep out of the way every single time maxile has been able to press forward here in round nine. And there's overhand left once again from Russell. Back into the body. Maxile getting excited. So using that left, trying to get inside a bit. McSayo's got to figure out a way to change up the angles a little bit and get on the front foot of Russell. Find ways to connect on that right hand. I know Russell is, as we said, not an easy puzzle. His defense is incredible. Back into the body, Maxile. Now Maxile try to counter with the right hook. And Russell seems content to just be on the outside. Try to anticipate when Mike Siles coming forward. Counter with that left and dance around. And now Mike Siles is able to connect on some body work. But just hasn't been enough in that ninth round. I need more pay to everything, you better. 
Are you hearing me? Uh, you're more clear than this. Listen, you need to not stop motherfucking reaching with your left hand. You understand me? When you got your double left hand, I need you to come up and know this. Your swag gonna fuck him up. Your head's gonna swag. Alright? Alright, you're fine. You heard Freddie Roach letting Mike Sayo know it's your fight. You know it's there. And in Russell's corner, you heard his brother saying he doesn't want him reaching with that left hand. That's when you leave yourself open, want some shorter shots. Try to smother Maxile a bit. And Russell now just tosses Maxile to the side. They got tied up. Round 10. Miguel Flores here, premier boxing champions here in Atlantic City. And now Maxile unloading a flurry. There is a straight left from McSyle that he was able to land on Russell. Now McSyle has Russell in the corner. This is where he wants him to be. If you're McSyle, you want to try to figure out ways to cut off the ring and keep Russell along the ropes or in the corner. This way you don't allow him to move as much as he has been. And there's that right hand that connected on the chin of Russell. Russell. That overhand left, the only punch he's been able to throw all fight. And now body shot by Russell. Final minute here, round 10. Back into the body. And now McSyle walking Russell down. Connected on the overhand left. Back into the body. connected, landed on Russell with that straight left flush as Russell was able to avoid further damage. Here's the replay. There are some body shots from Maxayo. He was looking for that big overhand right. Now Maxile with the short left on Russell. And you heard Freddie Roach let Maxile know we need two more rounds like the last round. And 
now Russell countered with that left hook. But Moxile still chasing Russell down. And now Moxile on top of Russell. Back into the body is Maxile. And now Russell back into the body. Russell dances right out of that. We are in the championship rounds. Russell in the black trunks, Maxile in the gold and blue. One hundred and thirty punches to fifty for Russell in power punches. I'm sure it's a frustrating night for Russell. This is one of those issues with his hand that he is trying to make the best of this situation and fight through this. But it's certainly not ideal conditions. Style. Again, coming forward. You start, you see at times some of slight similarities with Manny Pacquiao. How both guys at certain moments will dart forward, throw three, four punches at once, sort of off balanced from weird angles. Now again, Manny's one of one, but there are certain things and elements to McSyle's game that you, you start to see. The 12th and final round of this WBC Featherweight Championship bout. Moxile, Russell. Moxile looking to become a world champion. Russell trying to make his sixth world title defense. There's an uppercut connected on Maxile. And uh, followed up with a jab. Russell with an uppercut. And Maxile into the body. Now, McSyle almost had Russell pressed up against the ropes. Russell a little frustrated from that. There's a three punch combination connected for McSyle. Russell was able to stick 
McSile with a straight left. Minute and a half to go. And there's a huge right hand from McSile. And Russell raising his hands, trying to let the crowd know I'm still the champ. starting to hear the Gary Faithful. The crowd's getting into it. Cheering on both guys. You have Mike Siles section. You have Gary Russell supporters. Both clamoring for their fighters to come out victorious. Russell with a huge overhand left. Mike Sile has been the more active fighter. Certainly has the punches, the volume. Russell suffered a right hand injury early on. Hasn't been able to throw it at all. Final 20 seconds here of round 12. Back into the body. And now McSile. Pressing forward. And now a two straight lefts by Russell to close the final round. There's Mark Siles fans. And there you look on, on the Gary Russell Jr. family. Who will Come out victorious. It was a tactical battle. You can see the frustration on Russell's face. He knows he wasn't 100% and certainly did not expect that injury to his right hand to happen so early on in the fight. There's that, that was the punch. And there you see from that moment on, Russell was not able to throw his right hand. And Maxile was able to take advantage of it. He was throwing multiple combinations. Russell was essentially throwing with just one hand. Going to the body, he left himself open at times as Maxile was able to counter. But nonetheless, Russell did land a, several clean shots. And then there was Maxile with the straight left. He did not make it easy. And there you see both men. Neither had bad blood toward each other. Russell respected Maxile for stepping up and wanting this fight. <laughs> 203 to 64 in jabs in favor of Maxile. And Russell, as we know, he, he tends to, to use the jab a lot. But he was unable to, in this fight, due to his right hand. He is a southpaw, so his right hand is his lead jab, and once that suffered an injury, he wasn't able to throw his right hand. So now we are awaiting the scorecards. Mike Siles feels good. He thinks that he has done enough to become a world champion. And Russell, You see him grimacing as they are taking that right glove off. That is the injured hand. Now I'm curious if that was the undisclosed injury coming into this fight. And then he just further damaged it in the fight. Sile waiting to hear the judges' scorecards. Russell 
try to power through it. Credit to him, too. I mean, he, he, he easily could have stopped the fight, said, I hurt my hand, and I'm not going to continue on. But he did not. He powered through. And now here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. And gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a majority decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Lynn Carter scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges Mark Constantino and Henry Grant, they both scored about 115 to 113 in favor of the winner. And the new WBC featherweight champion of the world, Mark Magnifico, Mark Sayo. There you have it, Mark Magnifico, Mark Sayo. A world champion defeating Gary Russell Jr. It was close on the scorecards. As you saw, Lynn Carter had it 114-114. Mark Constantino had it 115-113. And Henry Grant had it 115-113. So it was extremely close. And there you see the final scorecards right there. And you see Gary Russell frustrated, obviously. Felt like he did enough to win, but he knows that he was fighting with an injury and he doesn't seem to be as down on himself with this loss. Right, well, thank you very much. Mark, congratulations. I can see the emotion and feel it. Can you describe this moment? Thank you, Gus. This is my dream. My dream drew come true. This is my dream since I was a kid, since I'm a amateur, and now I'm professional and now I'm a champion. This is my dream. Thank you, Rishan, BBC, Showtime, thank you. Al Heyman. Al -Heyman. thank you so much. Woo! What do you think this means to everybody back in the Philippines to have another champion? Yes, uh, I'm so proud that uh, I'm a champion now, and uh, thank you for my uh, support to Filipino fans and Filipino here. Thank you so much. Let's talk a little bit about the fight, if we can. Could you tell that his right arm and his right shoulder were impaired during the fight? Yes, I hurt him in the third round. I, I hit him in a good, good, good shot. So that's why he got hurt. And, and, and were you, having been aware of it, do you feel you were able to take advantage of that? Yeah, that's a little bit advantage for me because he's only using only one hand. And this is my opportunity to follow him, to follow through the, 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 my, my punch. What was your strategy from that point on when you knew it wouldn't be effective? Because Freddie and Coach Marvin said to me, just good combination, follow through, follow through, and this is it, this is, it. This is gonna be your dream. This is, uh, you become a world champion now. Now I became a champion, woo! Thank you! When he couldn't jab, that changed the entire complexion of this fight, correct? Yes, the jab. Yeah. He couldn't jab you. Yeah, I guess he didn't jab me. He's only using one hand. That's why I, got, I get him hurt, hurt a lot. Since he was hurt and impaired, would, would you give him a rematch? Uh, it's up to Sushan Gibbons and uh, my promotions. It's up, it's up to them. But I'm willing to fight anybody now. I'm a champion now. You are a champion right now. So congratulations to you. Let us talk to Gary. Hey, brother. Take care. Gary, you had indicated before the fight, even though you didn't want to say what it was, that you were hurt. What was the problem with your right arm or right shoulder? Oh, man, I, I believe I have a, a, a torn tendon in my right shoulder. Um, I haven't competed in almost two years. I, this is what true champions do. I wanted to step into the ring and display my superiority, regardless of an injury or whatnot. We did that. Um, I gave him a boxing lesson. I gave him a boxing lesson the whole way through. I landed clean whenever I wanted to. Uh, I couldn't use my right arm, but I was still able to throw effective shots and touch him at will. When did you know that you were impaired? At what point in training camp? Uh, about two weeks, about two weeks ago. So why did you go through with the fight? 
I'm a true champion. This is what warriors do. I fight regardless of what the situation is. Uh, I refuse. I refuse to uh, not compete and display my skill set to my fans, to the people that came out to show support and love. Please believe I will be back. I still want these fights. I'm out to get my show to fix, and we back at it. We booking. So even with so much on the line, you're saying you'd rather come out and fight than to not be in the physical shape you need to be to win. Say that one more time. With so much on the line, what you're saying is you'd rather come out and compete than be in top physical shape before the fight. Um, no, nah, that's not actually the case. Like I say, I had almost a two-year layoff. I was itching to get back in the ring and compete. I injured my shoulder about two weeks ago in the training camp. I refused to, to postpone this fight and push it back. I believed in my skill set and what, and what I bring into the ring. Um, I felt like I still won the fight, to be honest with you. And would, do you feel you're going to need surgery? It's possible. Uh, they wanted me to, I, it, it's an old injury. You know, I had this back in, before the 2008 Olympics. Um, they wanted me to go and get surgery on it. I refused to go and get surgery on it. They said I can strengthen the muscles around it to actually protect the tendon. Um, I didn't do it. I mean, I actually strengthened the muscles. I was able to get through a lot of my fights and stuff, but I heard it in my training camp. But once again, I'm a true soldier. I'm a dog at the end of the day. I refused to put this fight back, and I fought with one arm. He had his hands full with the fighter with one arm. The whole fight, I gave him a boxing lesson. Will you request a rematch based on the condition you were in? Hell yeah. Will he want a rematch? I don't know, but that's the, that's the question. I'll rematch him. All right, Gary. Hope you Shoulder gets healed up, and we'll see you next time. Oh, yeah. To my fans, man, I love y'all. Thank y'all for the support. I'm a true soldier all the way around the board. No retreat, no surrender. To my baby, Sacred Gianna, Harmony, Layla, Ali. Man, come on, man. Daddy be home soon. I love y'all.